Hey everyone, for first updates now, it's Tyler, and you're watching Behind the Bot. It's a fun show where we dive deeper into teams, the robot, and in this special episode, how FTC teams have come together, uh, and in particular this team, to win first Inspire Award at Michigan State. And joining me, I have 5290 Steel Eagles coming out of Heartland, Michigan. Uh, this team is going to talk to us to talk more about their team, give you a deep dive uh, into their freight frenzy robots, and provide tips on how to be in the running for Inspire Award for Future Seasons, all, came up, all coming up here on Behind the Bot. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in robotics scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first chose to go to Kettering University at kettering.edu. Pirate Team 5290, the Steel Eagles. 5290, we're going to be jumping uh, into your robot to start out with first and talking about more about the uh, Inspire Award as well. So uh, you have a couple of robots uh, here on your table, so we're delighted to speak with you about uh, what's going on for them. We're going to bring Jack on first to talk about some of the research going into the season and talk a little bit why uh, you, your team decided to go one way versus the other on your, on your robots. Tell me more about it, Jack. Um, so at the beginning of the season, we were looking at IndieMark, um, the website, and we saw that they had blocks and walls on there on the website. So we knew that there was a high chance that they would be using that in the game this year. And so we started looking at uh, videos of previous seasons where they had been where they had been using blocks and walls, and started looking at some designs that we thought would work well. Um, and then after that, we went to Kettering and saw their Robot in Thirty Hours reveal um, to j get more designs and more ideas. Um, and and we did a DFMEA after that, uh, or design failure modes effects analysis, to find solutions for problems before they could um, go wrong. When when you were looking at the game in Freight Frenzy, what were kind of your first thoughts in regards to what your robot had to do? So um, we actually thought of drawer slides pretty early because we had used them in, in past seasons and knew that they worked well and thought that they would be a very good design for what we had to do in this season with delivering um, blocks and balls up to the goals. Well, let's uh, start to jump into your robot. We're gonna bring Logan and Aiden and talk about your capping mechanism uh, that you have on your robots. So uh, I know one's gonna be talking about one of the robots and one's talking about the other. Uh, let's start out, um, you have two separate robots. I think one that you are currently competing with and one that was a prior robot as well. Let us know which is which and then uh, tell us more about your capping mechanism. Um, this was our first robot that we ended up making and this is our new robot that we're using for competition. Okay, tell us more about your capping mechanism on your robot. Um, so to start with, we ended up, we had something like this where the capping element, it was with zip ties as little hoops. So it would pick it up like this onto here, and then we could then put it onto the shipping hub. And then eventually we realized that this idea wasn't the best. So when we're volunteering at an FLL tournament, um, one of the team one of the FL teams had a design kind of like this for one of their robots. And we asked them if we could use this and make it um, for our robot. They said, sure. Then we made it like this and we ended up inviting them and we showed them what we did. So as uh, you move on to your other robot, so the, this, the other one's going to be the robot you're currently looking at using at Worlds. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so talk to me about, uh, is that capping me mechanism the same, or did you make modifications to that? Um, for, our, for our current robot, um, instead of using uh, drawer slides for capping, um, we are using a tape measure for capping right now. Um, that when extended, it will um, pick up our capping element, which has magnets on it, um, that um, works with the um, with this. And picks it up without even any magnets on the actual the, here. And this m mounts um, on the robot here and can rotate up and down and side to side. Um, and it's not on a robot right now because we're working on improvements with it. Um, and like we found this is way more efficient than our um, current, our old one. Where did you get the inspiration for the uh, tape measure and also the magnets? Um, the inspiration for the tape measure, um, when at states we found, we were um, we saw other teams that had it, that were using a tape measure, and then we um, found a ver version online, and then we edited it so it was um, 
a lot more compact than it um, originally was. And then for the magnets, um, because we, a lot of teams are also using magnets for a lot of in-game things. And it could easily be um, picked up. Yeah, it's, it's a great design that you have there, and uh, we're starting to see very successful teams going the tape measure route, so I'm sure you're going to have awesome success uh, into the World Championships as well with that too. Uh, so let's uh, start uh, going through uh, some other scoring mechanisms. We're going to talk about your ingest on your uh, robots. We're going to bring in Hayden and Carter, who are going to speak a bit more about uh, your ingest mechanisms. Okay, so our main concept of ingest on both of our robots is um, – we have these four inch gummy gummy wheels mounted on here that pull in the blocks and balls. They have the outer layer cut out so that uh, they have this kind of uh, rubbery thing and they pull them in really efficiently. And so these are mounted onto a piece of C channel that is that can uh, pivot on rubber bands. So uh, it has some give to it when uh, blocks and balls go through here. It pushes it up and keeps pressure on it. And let's take a look at, at your new robot. I know you said it's kind of similar. Are there any changes at all, or is it exactly the same between the two? Uh, so Carter's going to talk about our first robot. Sure. Uh, so um, both of our robots have kind of the same design, but for our old robot, um, our motor for the ingest is planted right here on the C-channel, making it a much simpler design, but it's also it also takes up a lot more space. And so we're in the new robot. The motor is planted inside of this C channel. That way we could have this skinnier option and it's a um, more complex design, but it takes up less space. Yeah, packaging is so important on a robot, right? And making sure you're utilizing your space uh, the best you can. Uh, from an ingest perspective on this, uh, what made you choose to go with this type of concept in the first place? And did you have any other concepts you were looking at using? Uh, so what we did is we saw that um, before the season started on the Animark website that um, this year we were using we were going to be using blocks and balls, and so we um, watched other um, seasons that use blocks and balls, and we came up with a design from all of that research. Let's keep talking about your robot more, uh, and let's actually go into the out Jess, and Duncan's going to be talking uh, what has gone into that. I see some linear slides on your robot, Duncan, so uh, talk to you more about the concept and design and any other ideas you might have had uh, for this as well. Um, yeah, so like uh, we said previously, we watched videos from the beginning of the season with robots that use blocks and balls, and some of them use this, but also some of them use, um, for example, we had like a team brainstorm session and some people were suggesting like a conveyor belt that would bring blocks up from the ingest but we end uh in end decided on mizumi drawer slides or linear slides that we had used in previous seasons and we knew how they worked but they did not fit our go build a building system which we switched to this year which uses all um m4 parts so we had to custom design and fusion um these brackets for holding the pulleys that allows them to go up and down can, can we show the like the entire scoring part work? Like, how does it actually dump out uh, the game pieces, for example? Um, so it goes up on the drawer slides from the ingest, and we have this bucket attached to a servo on the end, and that rotates and allows this to also tilt up um, on the axis down here, which um, allows us to get in all three layers of the uh, alliance or yeah alliance shipping hub, and allow also allows us to get into the shared shipping hub. And then looking at uh, your uh, your current robot as well, too, as you go in, are there any modifications to that um, from your previous robot? Um, yes. So we figured out about halfway through the season that um, GoBuilda also makes linear slides it's called their Viper Slide Kit. Mm -hmm. And that would work with our, um, our system, of system of building. And so we figured we'd switch to that because they're a lot, also a lot more compact and we don't have to make as many 3D printed parts for them. And so we use that, but we also had the 3D print spacers for the um, belts. Well, thanks a lot, Duncan. Let's uh, move on to Lydia, who's going to be talking about some of the programming uh, that's going to your robot, maybe some uh, sensors as well, too, as it goes into it. So, Lydia, uh, tell us on uh, either of the robots uh, what's gone into it from a programming and uh, sensor side. So we had a lot of 8th graders returning to programming this year, but we decided to still start with the basics. So we created a bunch of flow charts at first. And then we decided to go with a method of using s'mores, scalable, modular, reusable, extensible, and simple designs. Uh, and in doing this, we realized that our auton paths would uh, eventually take up 24 permutations, 
but by implementing switches, which you can uh, view on the back of our robot here and in a different location on the newer robot over here, uh, we were able to change those permutations from 24 to 6. And what the switches basically do is determines whether we're on off uh, front or back, so that's near the warehouse or near the carousel, or red or blue, so what side we're on. What made you um, want to do the like uh, from a switches method? I have actually really haven't seen that before. I've seen you know teams using uh, like a Pathfinder through their phone or something like that. Uh, what made you go uh, this method? Uh, so for us, it was basically just to simplify our programming and make it a lot easier uh, to control that. Because for some other teams, we would for some other teams they would have to manually in their um, in their controls they would have to manually. Uh, figure out which way they're going to spin the carousel. Sure. So that's one thing that we were able to uh, change by saying what if red or blue. So just by doing a switch, we don't have to manually control that. It will spin the way whatever the, uh, the switch is facing. And it also makes our autons a lot easier, and we had to program a lot less auton paddings due to that. No, that's great. I, I love to hear about that. Very cool innovation uh, on your robot as well. Let's start to wrap up uh, on your robot. And we're going to bring Joey in to speak uh, more about uh, anything else autonomous-wise or teleop that's gone in uh, from your robot. So take it away. So for autonomous, we move around the field using exact positioning, and then we get closer to our spot that we want to go to using sensors like our distance sensors right here and our touch sensor in this duck here. We don't have any of those on that robot though. And then we, for all time, we can do any positioning that the other team wants us to. We can spin ducks. We can also deliver the block in the correct level. And we can park an alliance or warehouse depending on where we're at on the field. And so, for Tully, go ahead. For Tully, we um, just drive around the field. Our goal during Tully Up is to be able to deliver blocks to the Alliance shipping hub, but we can also do shared and we can deliver balls as well. And for Endgame, we can do capping, we can also do ducks, we can deliver to shared, or we can deliver to Alliance still. And it just depends on our Alliance partner's decision. For Auton, another one of our sensors is the cameras as well. So you mentioned between uh, your two robots that you did upgrade and put a couple extra sensors uh, by where your uh, carousel uh, scoring mechanism is. Uh, can, you, can you just talk to me, like, why did you feel that was necessary to upgrade on your robot? Um, because whenever we were at competitions, we would usually hit the duck carousel in Auton. They would bounce back, and we would miss the duck because of that. But with this sensor, we can drive forward as long as it's pressed until it's pressed down and then we can spin off the duck accurately and then for our camera we've had that the whole time but these distance sensors allow us to get into the correct positioning on the alliance hub in case our alliance partner um accidentally bumps it and we have them positioned in the ramp well, I appreciate it. hearing uh, more about the Steel, Steel Eagles robots. And, uh, of course, from a robot performance-wise, we wish you best of luck. But uh, we got to definitely highlight on your team first Inspire Award at the Michigan State uh, Championship. So let's go over some uh, tips for teams who are looking to be uh, in the running for Inspire Award in uh, future years as well, too. Your team has done such a great job. I think it's great to share what your team has done uh, and what other teams can take over. So we're going to bring on uh, Andrew, uh, Brennan, Elizabeth, and Logan, and maybe a few others to speak about uh, your Inspire Award and, uh, more importantly, what your team has done to earn the Inspire Award and any tips you might have for other teams as well. Oh, thank you. Um for this year, our um, every single person on our team has participated in, in all of the aspects of FIRST, whether it's CAD, build, um, program, and stuff. So that made our team more versatile, and we everyone was able to do stuff, so we all participated in many things. We, all, um, we also did many outreach things, like closed drives, and we um, mentored FIRST teams. And we have Logan to talk about more. Um, so... But also, when we, whenever we did something, we took a record of it in our engineering notebook. So we, for so for every single design we did, um, like on paper or something, we took a record of it for our engineering notebook. Um, something that we also felt we've gotten this inspires that 
everyone in the team 3D printed a part that went on the robot. And we all did everything that we could to participate in first, even if we thought it was annoying. Another thing was when, uh, after one of our matches, a comment from the judges was that they were impressed when they caught us doing maintenance on our robot without our, um, without our, uh, what's it called? Uh, coaches giving us a direction to. Everybody also on our team has, has written one line of code and participated in programming as well. That's really cool. I, lo- I love to hear that all your students have got at least involved at some aspect, even if it's not what they want to do exactly, right? It's good to have that experience getting a little bit more. Uh, so let me ask you, and anybody can take this on here. Uh, there's many teams that obviously are vying for uh, the Inspire Award uh, in future years. What is maybe some uh, advice you would give to other teams to say, hey, I really want to try to get this award. What can I do better to make my team uh, more competitive for the Inspire Award? Uh, so the Inspire Award is just basically showing your appreciation for FIRST in general and that you understand how much uh, cooperation and great professionalism mean. And you need to be able to show that within your team by having everyone participating in a bit of everything and everyone being able to tell the judges with enthusiasm and how much they enjoy being part of the program. And it has to be evident that you're having fun at the tournament and that you actually care about how well you're doing. And even if your robot doesn't score exactly how you would hope it scores, you have to be able to show, hey, it's it's more than it's more than just competition. We're trying to do our best, but we're also trying to have fun and make ourselves and make our and have a good time doing it. Uh, another thing is important is reaching out in your community and trying to show others around you how much you're thankful for their support and how much first can help the community around you. And you have to be able to show this to the judges that you put time into these outreach events and that you did a lot to try and help out. So, so let me ask you as we wrap up here, what has Steel Eagles done for the community of getting out and, and inspiring uh, STEM and spreading the word of FIRST in your community? Um, um, so we have uh, done, uh, we've reached out to other FIRST teams. We've done food drives and clothing drives. We've p- presented our robot at um, some local stores, uh, local store, local store called um, Roll King. We've pre- we've showed a robot to people there, and we've also showed a robot to all, many of our sponsors to let them know what they're sponsoring us for. In addition, we've, uh, in addition, we've also adopted a family and um, like helped them with Christmas. And we've also um, been at one of our local elementary schools for um, for a science fair, and we were presenting there. Well, 5290 Steel Eagles, uh, your team has obviously had a phenomenal season. Uh, World Championships, as we record, this is just a month away. So coming up uh, real quick, I know you got a lot of preparation to do, so we'll let you get back to it. Uh, But thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us about your robot and your team. Congratulations on your Inspire Award, and good luck at the World Championships. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their Combat BattleBots team and First Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu apply to learn more. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.